the women actually want to initiate sex. Is that truth or is that a fairy tale? We're going to talk about that today on the C-Note show here with myself and Cynthia Cruz. And like I say, Cynthia and I are still licensed teachers. We've been in private practice for many years now, over 50,000 hours together combined in this field of long-term monogamous relationship, how to instill passion within sex and intimacy and connection, especially from a place where she feels like things are underwater right? Where your wife feels like things are underwater. Either she wants space or right now you're currently separated, or maybe there's very little sex happening. So maybe you've searched sexless marriage and that's why you found this channel. That's why you found us, myself and Cynthia. What do I do from here? How do I grow passion within my own self again? And how do I not make mistakes moving forward? And how do I give my, my family, my relationship a chance to see what can happen, whether it's This version of relationship or the next, whether it's my wife or the next woman in my life, I know that I want to love and lead with Mojo like a king, like we teach, because she wants safety, inspiration, and sexual leadership, and you want to avoid big mistakes. So we're going to talk about that here today, especially with Cynthia on the Sino Show. Women want to initiate sex. Is that true or is that bullshit? There, that's the stronger word there. It's the stronger word that I wanted to use. So talk with us about that. Open this up. Yeah, that's such a, a great question because there's so many, I believe, mixed messages out there. If I really feel into what does deep feminine energy want, deep feminine energy wants to be seen. She wants to be in constant responding mode to you. She can't even help herself. She's in constant responding mode. And she wants to feel like who she is to you is someone, some energy that's attractive, that lights you up, um, that turns you on. And so sometimes the feminine is craving that, like uh, the, the... Cave, wanting you to come bring her that experience of herself. And then sometimes she really does want to be able to express and reach out because again, it shows her that she is being seen, known and understood. And I I say that all with the frame that this is the deep feminine because already I I know in my head, you're probably not experiencing that as a whole. And when a woman is closing off parts of herself, when a woman is more in her masculine, it is so excruciatingly hard for herself to to feel out into those kind of desires. And so then, then to her, having to initiate anything feels like extra work, feels like she's just doing it to satisfy a requirement. And that's when you get a lot of unsexy behavior, unseeking behavior, if not a complete shutdown from from connecting with you. Yeah. Thank you for getting us started. We're going to go into three points that I prepared for today. Cynthia doesn't know what these are. I always pre- I always prepare for the call and she doesn't know most of it. So that way you and I and we get a spontaneous reaction from her. So let me ask of what you just said though. Uh, what if his wife has no idea what the hell you mean by deep feminine wanting to be in the cave versus wanting to be in surrender or fall? What if she has no idea? The woman has no idea really what you just described. Yeah. What would that mean if I were to ask that woman this question? If I were to ask her, do women want to initiate sex or no, they don't want to initiate sex? What, what might that woman say, the lay woman who maybe knows nothing about femininity and masculinity? Yeah, I would imagine that would bring up an immediate confusion in her body uh, because there's a deeper part of her that's so shut down. So again, it would then feel like extra work on her if we were to take a woman who's shut down, who doesn't know, who doesn't have that kind of frame or awareness or connection with herself to be told, hey, like you're the one to initiate sex would feel like a checklist item, a to-do and something even to push against uh, so she can have a sense of power, uh, power away from or a differentiated self away from your very powerful um, masculine pull toward her. Yeah. Yeah. So wanting more intimacy and connection is going to feel like work to a woman who maybe doesn't have awareness of this or is overwhelmed. Yeah. 
And it's, it's like, okay, are you going to initiate sex? When are you going to initiate sex? It gets even worse, right? You know, it's been so long since you initiated sex. What does that level feel like? Uh, well, first, when you were like sharing, like I could feel beneath all the confusion and her pushback, such a well of pain in her. Uh, but then that pain can quickly turn to very angry, very hot if uh, she feels like there's an expectation you have for her that she's not meeting and, and she's gonna take what she feels like judgment to her and immediately project it back onto you of all the things you she feels like you haven't been doing for her and then it becomes kind of like a tit for tat in her feminine mind uh, and again none of that evokes that deeper, softer, desirous feminine being. So shortly on this topic, I don't want to get too off topic, but we're not going to speak about why she may turn it around on you right now. But the short version is if you go to her like a man and say, hey, you know, bro, you're not living up to what my expectations. Let me criticize you. Basically, she might see that as shame. And that's going to push her either into her head or into more of like a defensive shelled off space. And that's her being closed down. That's the opposite of what we want. It's the opposite of feminine. Yeah. So how we deal with that has been a topic of other videos. Let's, st let's step forward in this one. So I do want to honor the guys that are here live. I love when you guys are here live and have your cameras on. Uh, there's a gentleman I believe I haven't seen before. I want to ask him to come on in. So, and then we'll get into our, our slides. And I've got excerpts from a Psychology Today article that we'll talk about within these three points. And I'll bounce those off of Cynthia as well. Yeah. Yeah, come on in. Yeah. yeah, say hi to us. And what, what brings you here? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so with my relationship now, um, my wife and I, uh, we've been married for 20 so y some years um, and recently separated just a couple weeks ago. Um, now, I knew this was coming probably since the beginning of the year. Um, you know, we've been having issues, just, you know, connection issues two kids, a couple dogs, um, just a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, we've been to therapy a few years ago. That really didn't help much. Um, just kind of a lot of arguments came from that. Um, and so over the last few months, as I knew that she was thinking about this, I, you know, got some more information. Initially, I was a little hummingbird creating problem, more problems than we had. Um, but I, I kind of calmed down. Um, gave her some space. And I, you know, from that space, I, I think I gave her a little bit, it, it was, um, it was, you know, distance, right. It was more than just emotional space. I just kind of just didn't bring up our problems. Right. And so I think she, so uh, a month ago, so she just went ahead and she decided to move out. And uh, so now we're living in separate places. Um, and since then, you know, things have gotten better. Um, I think she feels better about it. There was a relief. I actually feel pretty good. Um, and, uh, but we've, you know, we're, we're kind of distant now. And, and to your point about the masculine feminine thing. So my wife is, uh, she's very career oriented and um, she has a tendency to operate in her masculine a lot, especially when she has, she just got a new job and it's a pretty big job. So you know, she comes home stressed from that and she's, I mean, now she comes home to her apartment, but um, I just, I've noticed, you know, she's really wound up from that and I have a problem, you know, so it's hard to connect with her. Um, I'm interested to know, like, you know, how can I fix our situation? Um, not quite sure how much contact, you know, how much I, I don't want to, you know, how to approach her, right? And how to bring her into more of her feminine. I guess that's, those are questions I have in my mind. Okay. Yeah, that's good Good to start to get to know you. So is it okay if we ask you some more questions? Is that cool? Go for it. Yeah. So separate it. What has she said? These are leading questions, sort of. Sure. <laughs> so what has she said that she wants? Most women say they don't know. Does your wife know what she wants? Well, she says she's she doesn't feel, you know, adored, I guess, or, you know, and, and um, you know, I think, you know, I've actually, I, and I know I've kind of shut down a little bit. And I can understand why she feels that way. I've just felt, I felt distant from her, right? And, you know, no intimacy, kind of feeling like my side of the equation is not really being heard from her. So I've kind of just backed off. Um, How long have you felt that way? Um, for a few years. 
Yeah. Okay. And when and was... I just ha I haven't been good about bringing it up, right? We just don't. Um, we haven't been able to communicate with us that. Did something happen in life for for you you guys a few years ago? Did something happen then, or was this something... no single event? I don't think you know. It was just kids. You know, um, our parents. We lost our parents, right? Both of us. So that was stressful raising the kids. You know, a single income for a while. That's you know stressful. But um, you know, just the busyness of life. I think. Yeah, I've I've been I've experienced all of those that you just said. When roughly did she say that she doesn't feel adored? Uh, maybe a month ago or two. Oh, okay, very recently. Yeah. So what would she have said two or three years ago if we would have asked her how she felt about things, the relationship with you two or three years ago, the same time you would have felt sort of distant? Yeah, I, I think it's probably similar, right? My guess. Okay. Why didn't she speak up? In, and it sounds like you didn't speak up in any capacity a few years ago. Before. She didn't, you're saying? You, you you didn't speak up when it seems like you weren't connecting in the way that you were enjoying. Well, you know, we kind of just, we kind of just got in a rhythm, right? Where we're kind of that roommate cycle, right? Where I, I thought everything was okay, <laughs> you know? Um, and things weren't, right? So I'm, I'm realizing that now, you know, I've listened to a lot of folks' stories and I feel like ours is pretty similar, actually. Mm. Uh -huh. it's, it's very common that we don't have an open dialogue or this, this third entity of that we're trying to grow that we're giving love into the relationship that we just sort of assume it's going to be okay, right? We spend however many years we do in college or doing your job training, we spend how many years parenting, but how much time do we actually spend cultivating the act of love, the verb of love? So it's very common what you're talking about. Yeah. And where that generally leads and the feeling I'm getting now, and I'll ask Cynthia as well here in a second, where that leads is we just don't know how to talk about it. And it sort of dies on the vine. Like we're not out watering the garden. And if we don't water the garden, the flowers die. And in retrospect, that's, that seems obvious. It seems very logical, but back then it was confusing. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I realize now that, you know, when we tried to talk about deep things. And I think I was mostly it. I think she could get this way too, but you know, argumentative, defensive, blaming, right. Is that's everything that I was doing <laughs> and I didn't really understand it. Um, it's pretty clear to me now what I was doing. Um, and I think I've actually made a lot of steps, you know, mentally to kind of check myself. Um, but now it's like, we just don't have a lot of contact with the separation. And I'm, and I think she's, you know, things have gotten worse over time. So I'm looking for, you know, I'm just trying to understand how to reconnect, right? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So what might you ask about his wife? What might you ask him from here? Everything you said about how that happens with kids and dogs and jobs and just the, the like, oh, everything's okay as long as it's status quo makes so much sense. Uh, and then it also makes sense to me when I feel into your wife, if she was in that status quo energy too, how quickly, easily feminine energy can kind of die on the vine to use that, that symbolism again. Um, was there even now or before you separated, uh, were there things that you just picked up around her, even the way she'd hold her body with you? Um, were there times when she like turned away from hugs or you noticed, gosh, she even looks really sad right now that that you would want to share? Um, has that been something you've seen? Yeah, really, I, nothing comes to mind, really. I think, yeah, um, I mean, no. <laughs> I think it's just a, a slow thing. I, I think she's kind of just impatient right mm -hmm. yeah with me <laughs> now yes okay um, gotcha. well and what i haven't said is you know she's she's gotten a bigger job i think in her mind she's gotten more freedom and she's maybe thinking that she wants to explore that so that's what's changed mm -hmm. um that and and it's interesting because i was the breadwinner for most of the relationship and and she was a stay-at-home mother for a while and then she started working full-time and she got a bigger job last year and I actually saw that as an opportunity because I was stressed out in my job to get out of my job and kind of become a contractor and I was so stressed out I didn't really feel like she was tracking with that um, and I just pulled the trigger and did that and that upset her um, I'm not sure if she had plans at that point of maybe moving out anyway um, but I throw that in there too there's that was this, recent. That was fairly recent. A year ago or so. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if so, I'll jump in if you don't mind. So if, if I were you, then I'd like to go for a walk at sunset this Friday with you, with her, just alone. 
what would she say? Would you guess? I think she'd be up for it. I mean, we're, we're getting along pretty well now. Um, yeah. Okay. Have you asked her that? Have you done that? So we've been going on, you know, dates, I guess, you know, going out to eat probably at least once a week. Um, pretty, you know, she's over at the house actually, since she moved out, like almost every day, um, checking on the kid. We have, you know, teenage kids. They're pretty much independent now, but, um, we see each other at least every day. I'm thinking. Okay. And when you go out, is there a vibe of intimacy? Um, it's a friendliness. Um, so if at dinner you reached across and you put your hand on her hand, mm -hmm. what would she, what would she do? Would you guess? I don't think she would take it away. She would probably keep it there. Have you tried that? <laughs> um, recently, uh, yeah, a few weeks ago, Okay, and but pull it away, it, well, a few weeks ago we talked about, um, I talked about getting closer, you know, intimately, physically, and she says, no, I'm not, <laughs> you know, and I, the timing was wrong, right? Yeah. Let, um, let me jump in just for, yeah. just for impact and for fun. And because I think it's funny, I'm going to make a joke. <laughs> I'm going to make a joke at your expense. Is that a <laughs> Sure, go for it. So did, did I say, Hey, have you talked with her about sex? No, I didn't say that. I, I asked if you actually did these initiations or have you taken action? So where I'm going here is I'm trying to find where is actually the edge? Where is the edge of intimacy with the two of you? Mm -hmm. So what's the what's the most, let's say, advanced or intimate thing that you've tried with her recently? Just hugs and kisses. And, you know, over the last few weeks, I've kind of stopped that as as I knew she was moving out. Why? Um, I just, you just, I don't get that vibe. I think before she was moving out, I think there was this increased anger on her part. I think actually, and she said this to me that she's angry that, and as she moved out, she made this decision by herself. I, you know, I didn't interject and say, no, me, me, me. Um, but she's angry that she had to move out, right? And then she got angrier as that day came. So that's why that kind of the distance I felt was increasing. So this is right. I'm, I'm, I've gotten us to where, where Cynthia was asking about her physical bodily response. So I'll go back over to Cynthia in a second. Uh, have you tried hugging her since she moved out? I don't think so. No. Why? Why not? Fear. <laughs> Fear of rejection, I think. Right. Um, or, and just this whole idea of, I felt like maybe that's too much pressure for her. Sure. So yeah. that's great. This is awesome. So I'm going to press yeah. pause and you, that's a bunch and we'll talk about it and we'll go back to you. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, bud. All right. So let's, I'm going to make a little fun of this is a part of, this is the hazing that you get a little when we, when we jump on. It's because I like to do it. All right. I'm, I'm just going to smash together some things. That, okay. See that you're getting angry. She's moving out. Uh, it seems as though they, we were kosher before. So she's mo you're moving out. And so, all right, I'm, I'm afraid of you now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to go towards you. I'm afraid of you. And since you moved out, like you're over, she's over a lot and we got to dinner, but like, I'm basically friend zoning myself because I'm afraid of you and I'm not sure what to do. So we do these like friendly dinners mm -hmm. and you've got this big job, which I probably said like, oh, that's awesome that you've got this, this big job within my own self. I'm wondering, is that going to pull her away even more? Does she not care? I'll have even less time available to her. You know, I'm, I'm a calm man, but don't really know what to do and I'm kind of friend zoning myself. Mm -hmm. So talk with us about that spot. What does it feel like potentially to be this now career, now going after a career after being a stay-at-home mom? What might be going through her body, her feeling? Yeah. Well, I, I would say what's going on through her body about her career is something totally different. But when you were describing that, the first thing I felt with the, I'm a little bit afraid of you, of your anger, I immediately felt like a clenching and armoring like down the center of my body, like even over my, my stomach. And then the, like the, the energy of like, we're just kind of, we're friends and it's very neutral energy. There's, I think the feminine can feel in that, even though she might have anger towards you, that kind of friend zoning is a ugh feeling um, and, and kind of a pushing away. And then when like we all do as human beings, there's like might be story in your head of you're sitting at dinner, you know, I'm not sure where this is going to go. Are we going to get back together? She's she actually is going to feel that as you're not you, she can't even feel your energy because it's in the headspace and she'll she'll feel very uh, disconnected. So I know those are all like three like. Oh, those are like tough blows that she might not even be conscious she's processing through her body, but it would be a reason for her feeling those things to keep the separation, to not reach out for connection with you and to start in her own mind contemplating like a, 
a permanent separation, a permanence away from from you in the marriage. So let's, yeah, so let's talk about, and if you have a chance to come back and then we'll bounce forward here in a minute. You asked, well, what can I do to connect with her now? And I want to give you a mindset. Uh, there's too many pieces, obviously, for us to talk about in this one call. We've got some other things to get to. But I want to give you a mindset to chew on. And then I'd love for you to either write to me or post in our forum, our Great Men Move Mountains Facebook forum, if you're in there. Um, for those of you that are not on our forum, it's free. It's private. GreatMenMoveMountains.com slash Facebook is the way to request being in. So I'd love for you to take what we're going to say, the mindset I'm going to say here. I don't talk about this mindset much, but it's very practical and to the point, And that's where you seem like you are. Mm -hmm. So chew on this. It's a seed I want to plant and I want you to think about and write about. Okay. So if you assumed that your wife wanted to be single, that right now she was happy to be single. In fact, she's feeling more freedom than she probably ever has in her adult life. That's probably how she would describe it. And including empowering things like a, uh, a masculine energy might say, I'm empowered, I'm out in the world, I'm making a difference, I feel free. Okay? That's not what the feminine energy would say. That's her wanting to achieve and succeed out in the world and check boxes and tasking, doing the work. So if you assumed that she just wanted to be single from now on, but she's being kind of like nice and protecting your feelings by not saying that to you. What, how might you approach her differently? How might you, uh, how often would you see her? How often would you want to take her out? How, how much time would you hang out with her when she comes over to the house? If that were the case, what's your initial impression to what I said? Have you thought about that? Yeah. So your question is, is if I knew she was you know, going to end it, right? Um, how would I approach that? Well, that's, um, that's an interesting point. Um, what if she never planned on it? Some women don't ever plan on necessarily ending it until down the road some other time. So what if she just kind of planned on leaving it as it is, but had no intention of being intimate or sexual with you ever again? And that's how she felt in this moment. And she wanted to feel single. Wanting to feel single means she doesn't want responsibilities of relationship. Like she's not interested in your problems. Usually she's not interested in relationship problems. She doesn't want to talk about sex and intimacy. She doesn't want to talk about the potential of getting back together. We've talked about why and other calls, but if that were the case, if she wanted to feel single, regardless of any filing paperwork, if she wanted to feel single, how would that affect what you want with her? How much time you spend around her, how you acted toward her? Um, she wanted to feel single. Um, I guess well, I would give her, I mean, if she, I mean, I guess I would give her space, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily want that right for us. Um, I'd want to talk about, I think from my perspective, I, well, I want to talk about the next version of us, right? Um, so what if she's not interested in talking about the next version of you, though? Is and and again, would, you, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, if that's the case, then I would just, I would, I would start living my single life, I think, and uh, maybe distancing more. Okay. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Did know you just breathe deeply for. and smiled a little bit, yeah. by the way. Why, why is that? Why, what was the breathing deeply and smiling a little bit about there? Yeah. I don't think it had anything to do with the actual words. Cause I, I don't want you to have to go through that if you don't want, but there was something in your energy when you said that, that I just felt this uplift and like excitement and like my whole <laughs> body responded to that. And like, Oh, like I wanted to know more about you. I didn't know she was going to do that. So here's, here's <laughs> my point is I'm not saying go be sing you. I'm not saying go right. be single. I'm not saying file divorce. I'm not saying, you know, tell her to go pound sand or anything like that. I'm saying if in your mind, your mindset shifted to she wants to feel single because our approach, I'll just say this quickly. The one who wants to exit the relationship, the one who wants space is moving away. They're like walking the other direction, right? And the more we start to chase, the more they want to run. And if we don't have the mindset that's true, the true mindset is a woman who says, I want space does not currently want relationship responsibility. Hence, she wants to feel single. And in our minds as a man, when you realize my woman wants to feel single, it really helps us shift into the mode, the mindset and the mode of energy. It's going to affect the relationship in the way that you're wanting. So it's incredibly counterintuitive and uh, it feels, it, it's paradoxical to us as a man. Right. So talking about, it. right. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. go get a life. <laughs> get a life and uh, maybe she'll look back right maybe she'll go what's what's he doing exactly that's the yeah. short version yes but when you go get a life it's not to hopefully she turns around and looks at my amazing life right she's walking the other direction so what choice do i have right so i think it's totally just it's giving complete freedom i think right maybe i'm 
Correct. Again, so I just want to be very careful. I don't want you to say, hey, you have complete complete freedom, divide, you know, divorce me, fuck other guys. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying just in your mind, if if what you mean by com- I, I'd have to have a discussion with you what you mean by complete freedom, because that seems like you're jumping to some other things I don't know there in your mind. Right. Uh I wouldn't dra- I'll say this in a different way. I wouldn't drastically change anything you're currently doing because the vibe that I'm getting is that you're doing good stuff. Like you're doing your work. You seem calm. You're understanding. You know what she said she wants. She wants to be adored. You took responsibility for yourself. You acknowledge all the stresses and outside pains and distractions, like all these good things. It's the mindset that you currently have that I want to help shift. So if she wanted to be single, maybe I wouldn't want to take her out every week. Maybe I wouldn't want to be chummy. Maybe right. I wouldn't want to like try to talk with her in the kitchen as much when she comes and sees the kids. Right. Because okay. I'm I'm more chill about it. I'm not, I don't have an agenda. I guess you. I think yes. that's good info. Yeah. So think, and please write, write to me or write to us. Cause I want to know how this unfolds over the next week or two here. <laughs> you bet. Thanks yeah. guys. Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. I've got about 12 more minutes left on this call. I want to ask Cynthia definitely some more feedback on what I prepared here. And we've got some excerpts. If you want to punch any questions into the chat, certainly we'll do our best to get to them today or another time or, you know, absolutely reach out to us directly. So women want to initiate sex. Is that true or is not, not that not true? We've all heard, I think, of spontaneous versus responsive sexual desire. And quickly, spontaneous desire can be thought of as the feeling that you get when you randomly out of the blue want sex guys, right? Like you just think in your mind, it'd be great to fuck right now. Like I'd totally do that, but you don't really feel it yet in your body. So to speak, continue is what most of us traditionally view as being horny, Randy, hot to trot, whatever you want to call it. 75% of men primarily experience desire in this way. So sort of in your mind first, like you don't have an erection and then think, Oh, I have an erection. I could have sex now. It's usually you're thinking about sex before the physical response. That's spontaneous. However, most women are different. For most women, sexual arousal actually precedes the feeling of sexual desire. So I'm going to ask Cynthia about this. Women's desire is primarily responsive, meaning sexual desire that occurs after physical arousal. Again, we have some other things to get through and we have about 10 minutes left. So let's just tip our hats at this. We've heard this. Do you agree with this? That a woman generally needs to feel some kind of physical, I don't know, you tell me, sensation, um, movement of energy in some way prior to thinking, oh, yeah, I want more intimacy. I want sex. Yeah. And and I do want to preface, I know, you know, every woman is a little bit of different calibration. So you'll see different things. But the at the end where it says her desire is responsive, you know, absolutely and she has to feel some arousal first, I would want to fill out that like a a bouquet here that it's there might it might be feel the arousal physical first, but it also might be feel the arousal emotionally first. A lot of times a woman really feeling a deep emotional state with you, even if it's pain, even if it's anger and and feel your capacity as a sacred masculine to cultivate that, honor that, and hold that, that is sexual arousal to her. Even feeling your energy shifts, something that she feels in you that suddenly causes a response in her body, that's that's arousal for her. And, and um, she can reach out and seek for you then because something in her body has moved. And then with spontaneous desire, I, I think there's a lot of women who do talk about having spontaneous desire. However, I feel that more of her masculine energy can have sexual desire as much as her feminine energy. So the just in the head moment of I want sex is her being a little bit more in her her masculine seeking hunter energy. Um, and I wouldn't say that's so much coming from that deep, uh, receptive, feminine place. Yeah, thank you. And certainly we could talk a whole nother call on what Cynthia just said. So if you have questions about that, absolutely let us know. Number two that I prompted for today, using sensation to activate responsive desire. So I want to ask Cynthia about this because this piece of the article, using sensation to activate responsive desire. So as I'm reading this, I'm sure you men will think, okay, how far away is my wife from even have, even considering this? 
So I'll read this, these two paragraphs here. It's normal for women to need a little warming up before experiencing the desire to have sex. For example, a woman might be watching a movie and a steamy sex scene comes on and she's turned on. Or when she goes to bed at night and her partner turns over and kisses her, she doesn't immediately feel like taking it all the way, but starts to feel the desire as that makeout session progresses. Again, arousal precedes desire in many cases, especially for women. You can use erotic sensation to turn on desire no matter what desire style you have. If you're a woman wanting to have more sex but not experiencing spontaneous desire, you may want to try allowing yourself to fully immerse yourself in foreplay and see if your responsive desire comes online. If you're a man feeling frustrated by your partner's seeming lack of desire, try asking for consent to sensually touch her in a way that build up to the main event to activate her responsive desire. Okay, Cynthia, when I was reading this, just thought how logical, mm-hmm. like, hi, sweetie, I read in psychology today that we could do sensual, you know, touch to like get your desire going because <laughs> you you have what's called response. Yeah, yeah, it's like not going well. Um, <laughs> and also, so you're involved, the, the question I really want to ask is your involvement in women's groups, advanced women's groups, Tantra, sexual intimacy, et cetera. Uh, I don't see a woman, like, help me understand if, if she's not coming to her man, if she's not opening, if she's so stressed out by work and parenting, how is it even possible that she would even want to consider this versus if she's not super stressed out and they are connecting in a way where he could actually do this, Mm -hmm. then aren't they kind of doing fairly well in the first place? Like at what point, where do you see this actually being applicable? Where, where do they talk about this? Does he just do these things without talking about it? That's probably where I would go. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, even that, you know, even that phrase, you know, her lack of desire. So ask her for consent first. That's so tricky now because you might hear the feminine talking about that. And then also in these communities in masculinity, we talk about women not wanting to be asked, uh, wanting you to take the lead. And that, that puts her into a place of arousal, uh, so I, I think what's to me the most important here is this this woman that's being in front of you has layers here. And sometimes the layer facing you is about her day and about the stress she's had and, and how that's kind of hijacking her body in a good way or, or a poor way. And if she can't find a way to be touched in uh, by you th- about that, she will feel like even a request to touch her physically is bypassing all these important things, all these important layers that are that are kind of the roadway to she wants to she can let go of the day and then have sex. So to me, the it's not so much about talking about how I can touch you or getting consent or not getting consent. It's it's the I would desire as a woman, a partner who's present that what layers out front, what layer needs to be loved. And I'll use the word turned on, but turned on in a way where she gets some expression to share herself, to emote a little. And then it can be so quick. She can move down to the next layer and what's there. Maybe it's a layer about being a mom and what's going on with the kids. And each of those is kind of like withdrawing a piece of the clothing and getting down to where her sexuality actually lives and breathes. Yeah, it's well said underneath the surface of the masculine shell, as you talked about, and we teach. Yeah, I'll ask you about that in a second. By the way, we teach these concepts one-on-one and in our private membership groups. If you're curious about that, reach out to us, greatmenmovemountains.com, ask me about it. So talk for a minute about masculine shell, because that's what you're describing in a different way here, I believe. The layer of work, the layer of children. Mm. And what most men that are watching this or that are here are going to ask, well, what if she doesn't want to open underneath? Either she's kind of shut down all of her sexuality, so she won't let me pass the initial layer because it's what, shame and guilt for her underneath and pain. Mm -hmm. Or... Her identity now is wanting to be single. So why would she let you pass that initial layer if she's wanting to be single? But talk with us about the masculine shell that you're speaking about there. And we teach we teach about praising her masculine mm-hmm. as a gateway, a potential gateway to open that shell to allow the potential of her feminine flower to bloom. Yeah. So talk with us for the last couple of minutes here about 
praising her masculine shell, what you're talking about. Yeah. So I would say, like, I'll use the word masculine all the time to talk about parts of a woman, but her masculine energy will never be the same as yours. It will never have the same caliber. It will never feel the same. It will never respond exactly the same. And and so that leads to connect to if my woman is presenting and her first layer is this ardent shell of her version of masculinity, a way to massage that a way to have even, I'll use the word like foreplay with that, is to to notice it and see it and see what's beautiful in it. Um, I was thinking how proud your wife must feel of her, her accomplishments and what she's created in her life recently. Uh, and she doesn't want to just take proud uh, in, a, in a very masculine way just by herself. She wants to know that other people are proud of her too, that what she's doing is really powerful so that her proud feeling can glow and be seen uh, and be known and connected to. Uh, So to me, that's how you play with her masculine shell, especially recognizing her masculinity never holds a candle to yours and can't respond on the same way your energy. Thank you so much. We're out of time for today, guys. We'd love your questions. And so if we missed out on a question that you have, certainly go into our forum and post at greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook. And quickly, stress, the ultimate libido killer. And I don't necessarily need to read how stress can be the libido killer, but things like body image or the grocery list hasn't been completed, or she's concerned about sexual performance, or there's something going on in the relationship. These are non-starters that, for instance, Cynthia and I help you unravel, help you heal from the ground up. So it's not just dealing with the symptoms, but actually healing what's underneath and teaching you how to do that for the rest of time, Mm -hmm. for the rest of your life, no matter what woman that you're with. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here, guys. Great to see you you guys next week. Same time.